Hey guys, uh, it's Paul DeAngelis from um, Total Balance and CrossFit Endurance. Today I'm going to talk about the ketogenic diet. Uh, it's funny, the ketogenic uh, diet, the ketogenic approach, it's something that has become a lot more popular these days. It's something that I've been utilizing with a lot of my, my clients at, uh, at my gym out here in Oakville, Ontario, Canada talking a little bit about fat adaptation from a health perspective or from a performance perspective. And it's something as I travel the world and, 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 um, and provide information to, for our CrossFit endurance uh, seminars, we talk a little bit about uh, becoming fat adapted and how useful it is to the endurance athlete uh, from a perspective of, of longevity and performance. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about, and, and I'm, gonna little, I'm gonna talk about the ketogenic diet weekly, and I'll do that on Saturdays, and what we're going to talk a little bit about, just a little introduction to it. So something that's been around for a long time, but interestingly enough, in my travels, I come across people that um, will tell me, I've tried the keto approach, and it didn't work for me. Many reasons for this, not understanding really what ketosis is. It's something that's been around for a long time from a paleo perspective, it's like an offshoot of the paleo diet and what I mean by that is when we look at today's society and their approach to keep the ketogenic diet what they do is they eat a lot of protein so my first one of my first questions to them is you know how much protein do you eat and usually it's a high amount even if they measure it or not and when we talk about about, about you know is it one gram per body weight in pounds or is it one and a half grams of protein body weight in pounds that can be too much and there's a, there's a little problem with that, and it's, and it's a process called gluconeogenesis. And what that is, is anything past your protein tolerance that you intake, by starting the ketogenic approach, or ketogenic diet, that past your tolerance, your, your macro protein tolerance, that turns into glucose. So glucose stays up, the body still utilizes it as a fuel, and you never tap into the fat adaptation. So that's one of the main reasons that um, a keto approach won't work for people. So they're like, that didn't, it didn't actually work for me. Another main reason that a ketogenic approach doesn't actually work for people is they never actually do blood markers. They don't actually check their blood markers on a daily basis. Where for some people, I might get into um, uh, checking their glucose levels in a fasted state, post meals, after every meal, anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half to maybe even two hours post meal, and even post training to see where their body is. Because what happens here is even in restricting carbohydrates down to even a low level, we could, uh, we could easily get into a catabolic state if we're using too high intensity and our body is in a, in a constant state of stress. And this constant state of stress could be from numerous aspects of our life. It could be lack of sleep, it could be the jobs that we have, it could be um, you having a stressful situation in family relations, it could be a combination on one aspect that um, uh, really, really, allows your body to stay in this constant state of inflammation. When that happens, then of course, um, the body can never reach a balanced state where your body can heal. So my advice to people is, when looking at a ketogenic diet or ketogenic approach is, really look to getting some proper advice. Really do your due, due diligence, because if, if you're getting information about uh, measuring your, 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 your state of ketosis by urine strips, you're probably going down a bad road because even though your urine strips may tell you, for example, that um, you're in a state of ketosis, those are ketones that are actually not being used. And so your body is still using glucose potentially as fuel. That's the way I, uh, that's the way I tell it to, to my, my clients that I coach in this approach, be very careful. So um, the other thing is you have to moderate your macros. So if you are now restricting carbs, you also have to look at restricting your protein. And I'll talk a little bit about you know a baseline and where to start uh, next week, but be very careful on making sure that you do restrict those two macros right down to a nice level where you can teach your body to now make the shift from glucose to um, fat burning. You're going to burn the fat in your, in your body. Now the other part of it is you know you've got to make sure that you, you you up your fats considerably so that you don't actually teach your body to go anabolic and you, or catabolic and you actually teach to become anabolic. Really, really important. So that's part of it. Uh, next week I'll talk about that baseline, where you could start, 
And then from there, we're gonna go about and start to find your, 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 your macro tolerances, specifically carbohydrates and protein. And we do that with the blood work. The blood work will tell us what's happening on your body multiple times through the day. So if you're allergic to something, um, your glucose will go up. If you had a stressful time, your glucose is gonna go up. If your workouts are doing you some damage right now, your glucose will go up. And how I tell this to people is your blood never lies. Uh, and so from there, we can get an accurate, um, we're, we're not gonna guess. And so now the direction is playing out for us. And something I tell everybody is, listen, for how many people are on this planet, if there's 11 billion people on this planet, there's 11 billion approaches. And what we have to do is find an individual approach for you to um, allow yourself to succeed potentially, potentially with, um, with a ketogenic approach. So we're looking at something that's low carb to start, potentially low protein for probably what you're doing currently right now, and a high fat. And we'll also discuss how do you do this in, in, uh, in your daily life. So lots of things to talk about in the upcoming weeks. I'm excited about bringing this to you guys. And um, what I want you guys to do is uh, follow, follow on uh, Instagram. What I'll be doing is I'll be talking a little bit about um, uh, some, of the, some of the clients that have had success with this, um, some of the issues you're gonna have, the roadblocks and the challenges that you're gonna have as you make this adaptation. And um, uh, Instagram is at Coach Paul DeAngelis. And funny enough, you, you can also see where I'm coaching, uh, the CrossFit Endurance. At CrossFit Endurance um, is the Instagram, CrossFitEndurance.com. Uh, this is something I talk about in detail at these seminars because from the approach for our, my endurance athletes, this is the superior fueling source. And when you're getting into like Ironman tri triathlons, you're talking about um, uh, races that are going to be in the 12 plus hour range. Fat is going to be your fuel source. It's going to be the fuel source to go to um, in your event and it's gonna allow you to perform optimally. Anyways, um, subscribe to me on uh, my YouTube channel, Paul DeAngelis, and we're gonna get this thing rolling here in the weeks to come. Thanks for following, bye.